Hey guys, you're watching Downski, the place to be to develop your creative skills and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to create a logo made up entirely from gradients all in Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump into it. Right here, so you can see I'm in Adobe Illustrator and I've created a new artboard that is a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high and the color mode is set to RGB. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the ellipse tool from the toolbar, just left click and hold shift to draw a circle and then I can drag this circle into the center of the artboard. You can see it snaps nicely. And one more thing I'm going to do quickly is go to view and just switch off snap to pixel just so we are only snapping to the point. So let's click that, turns it off, fantastic. Okay, so next I'm going to select this shape and go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, hover over the bottom right corner and hold shift Holding shift will scale it down proportionally and stop it from distorting out of shape or anything crazy like that. So we'll go for something like this and just hold shift to drag it horizontally to the center. You can see it snaps in place, lovely. Let's go to edit, copy, edit and paste. And with that copy of the smaller circle, we can hold shift and drag that to the bottom. Boom, you can see it snaps in place. And we have a fill at the moment, so let's just drag over to select everything. And from the bottom of the toolbar, we'll click on this icon here, and we'll set the fill to none. So we just have a black stroke or a black outline. Super duper, right, let's drag over everything to select it. And again, from the toolbar, we're gonna grab the Shape Builder tool this time. That's this one here. And we can hover over different sections that intersect or overlap, and you can see it's marked by this gridded texture. And we can actually click in one segment and drag through. You can see a little squiggly line here. Drag through into another segment and it highlights the selection with a red outline. Now what's going to happen when I release my mouse button is it will combine these two sections into one shape. Voila, there we go. So I can do that up here as well. Select this top section and just drag with my cursor my little squiggly line. And once that crosses into another section, you can see it becomes highlighted. Release. And there we go, we are done. So what I can do now is I can pull these apart, but you can see we've still got a shape remaining in the center and we need to remove that because if we don't, well, it can cause some issues later down the line. And if I put these back together with the undo feature, we will get some doubling up of these lines here, which as I say, can cause problems. So let's select everything again and grab that shape builder tool one last time and you can see on my cursor, I have a plus icon at the moment. This indicates that I'm going to be combining shapes together and adding them. If I hold Alt on the keyboard, it changes to a minus and this will remove shapes or subtract them from the selection. So with Alt held, if I hover over this centerpiece and click, it doesn't look like much has changed, but actually it's removed that entire center area. And if I separate these, you can see that the shape is now just made up of these two halves. So again, let's undo that, put it all back together, but essentially we've created the basic structure for the logo. And now what we can do is drag over everything and from the bottom of the toolbar, swap the fill and the stroke. So they're both black and there we go. We're now ready to add some color. So first of all, let's go up to the swatches panel here. Now you probably won't see this because I've docked this here specifically as part of my workspace. If you want to see it, just go to window and down to swatches, you'll find it there, or you can select a shape and you'll find it here under the appearance panel. But I just like to have mine docked here on the side so I can select colors and do things with them just when I haven't got any objects selected. So again, I'll deselect everything and I'm just gonna pick, uh, let's go for four. So I'm just gonna pick four swatches at random and just make sure I check the global box and click okay. It doesn't matter what colors they are because we will be changing them in a moment. And you can see by checking the global box, it adds this little white tab in the corner. And the reason I'm using global swatches is because once I've set up all my gradients, I can control those colors from the swatches panel without the need to go back into the gradient and edit each one manually on here. It'll all make sense in a moment, I promise. Smashing, so I've defined my four global swatches in the swatches panel, and I'm going to now select the shape and select the gradient tool from the toolbar on the left. And you can see over here in the gradient panel, we've got a few different options. We have linear, which is either left to right or vertically or diagonally. Essentially, it runs in a straight line. 
we have this one here, radial, which goes out from the center or towards the center. And in CC 2019, we've got the new freeform gradients, which I love and is what we're going to be using today because linear doesn't really go around this curve and radial doesn't really work. So let's click on this. And you can see it adds these two points here with some colors by default. Let's just move these around and I can click anywhere else and it will add another one. So we're gonna add four in total and then I can select these by clicking on them and I can click on this little circle at the bottom and it adjusts the area that they cover. So what I'm going to do now is position this one here. This is going to be my darkest color and I'm just going to apply each of my four swatches to each of these points. So I'm just selecting the points with the gradient tool and assigning a global swatch. There we go. And I can now move these around. I love this in real time. You can see how it all changes and really control your gradient. And you can see that it's perfect for this shape as well because I can just go around this curve and ah, there seems to be a, a sneaky one that snuck in here, a bit of white. So I can just select this one, hit delete or backspace on the keyboard and poof, it is gone. So what I'm going to do now is now I've created the basic structure of my gradient. I can just deselect everything by clicking on the workspace and now open up these swatches individually. And this is where you see the benefit of having global swatches. I can now check the preview box and I can fine tune this color from the swatch. So we'll start with a nice dark one here and just open up the next swatch, check preview. And I think we'll go for something like this. So I'm just moving along through each swatch and adjusting that gradient in real time until I get something I'm happy with. Last one, check preview. Looking pretty good. Okay. And then I can go back to the first one and just maybe tweak this a little bit more. I could probably spend hours doing this, fine tuning my gradients, of course, that's not really appropriate for a tutorial. But there we go, I think we'll settle something like this. Okay, there we go, fantastic. So I've now created my gradient. I could go and create another gradient for this one, but because I've already created this and I'm going to be mirroring this in this example, I'm actually going to select the black shape, hit delete or backspace on the keyboard, poof, it's gone. Select the gradient shape that I've got left and go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place. And if I hover over the corner, I see the rotate symbol and I can freely rotate this around, but I want to get this 180 degrees exactly. So let's hold down shift on the keyboard and you can see it snaps to set increments. 180 degrees, fantastic. Let's release that and we'll shuffle that into position. I'm holding shift as well to keep it perfectly horizontal. And what I'm also going to do is just grab the zoom tool here and just zoom in like 50 billion percent, nice and close just to make sure that everything lines up perfectly. And if you are zooming in to these percentages, I think I'm at like 64,000% now. If you get it right and it lines up at 64,000%, when you zoom back out, it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be impossible to tell the difference if there are any gaps or not. Unless you want a gap, for example. Actually, no, that looks terrible. Let's put it back. But there we go. So we've created the design now and as I say, you can go back, check preview, and you can adjust this swatch and you can see it updates it on both halves now. So I've not got to go and change the color and manually add it here and then manually add it here. I can just update it once and voila, it updates through the entire document. And there we go, logos, gradients combined together <laughs> into a cool design. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions or comments, please do drop them down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.